All right. Peace and greetings, YouTubers. So, LaShawn Daniels. Um, you know, it's always really sad when you see people pass on, mainly because one, you don't want them to pass on. You know, you always want people to be here forever. And two, when you think about the impact it will have on the people who are close to them when they're no longer here, you know, that's always a sad thing to think about as well. Um, if you don't know who LaShawn Daniels is, just know that he was an individual who contributed to many of the R&B gems that came out in the last 25 years, many of the blockbuster R&B hits that we remember. But in addition to that, you know, just in general, he was a very upstanding guy. Um, he and his wife had a really great, um, like, like a blog, just kind of like couples advice type thing. I really liked the two of them because it was like great symbolism of just black love. Um, he also had three sons, so it's always kind of sad to just recognize and understand that, you know, you know, they're going to have to, as far as his family, you know, create that new norm without him physically there. That's always tough. Um, and as somebody who's been experiencing that in the past few years, just dealing with the loss of a parent and, and restructuring what your new norm is, that can always be tough. Um, but, you know, what I will say, the good thing is that his works, his talent and his impact are not something that die off with him no longer physically being here. Because the thing about art is that art never really dies. You know, art will always transform and will carry on through the generations. So no matter how much technology changes or people change or time passes, you know, art is here forever. And art will always have that impact. And art will always, especially music, will always connect with every generation. There's always somebody from a different generation who will connect with something that, it, you know, somebody has put out when it comes to art. And, you know, the gift of somebody like Deshaun Daniels, who was a songwriter, a composer, a producer, you know, the gift of somebody to be a lyricist or somebody who really writes lyrics is you're able to take the experiences of all of us and put it into a form that we all can relate to, which is music. Music is that one thing that can bring everybody together. Even when people have differences of political views or opinions or just how they see the world, music is that one element that does kind of put everybody in a space where, okay, we can have camaraderie right here in, in this space, just for this brief moment in time, for that three minutes and 30 seconds, you know, that music can really bring a lot of people together. And I think that's one of the things you can remember about somebody like LaShawn Downs is that when you go back and you look at his contributions to music, it's like, wow, you know, and I, and I think that's why so many people connect with music. Music takes people to a different place in time, sometimes good memories, sometimes bad memories. But at the end, it just takes you to a different space. Um, and, and it's so funny because with lyrics, you know, lyrics tell the story of our lives, even if they're not even lyrics we wrote. Sometimes you will hear a song that you didn't even write, but it just connects with you. And sometimes depending on how much you are in your head that day, any lyric can relate to you. Like, like think about like when you, you get dumped or there's a bad breakup or something. Every song that comes out somehow relates to you. Like you'll be babysitting your little cousin who's two years old and y'all are singing the Itsy Bitsy Spider and you will find a way to make that song relate to your being pissed off that you ain't in a relationship no more. You know, the Itsy Bitsy Spider. That's right, they crawled up that water spot and guess what? Rain just had to wash them out. Six months of hard work for nothing. You know, people will find a way to make <laughs> the lyrics relate to them. And I think a good songwriter has a way of connecting with audiences. And LaShawn Daniels, the work speaks for itself. So let's kind of dive into some of, you know, his work. And it's just, this has been a really crazy summer, right? There's just been so much tragedy. Everything from these crazy mass shootings and, and you know, even with um, Hurricane uh, Dorian, all the people in the Bahamas, I'm so worried about. You know, I have... We have a lot of subscribers to this channel who are from the Bahamas and from like Nassau and from those areas. So I'm a little nervous. I'm hoping everything works out. So for everybody who's been impacted by any kind of struggle, hardship, setback, hurdle, anything, I hope everything aligns and works out for you in the capacity that you're in because goodness, all of us just need an extra boost of motivation this week, I'm saying. Anyway, so some of the songs um, that he's contributed to and, and when we're talking about LaShawn Daniels, um, Goodness, I think I just hit my wrong button here. Hold on, I gotta make sure I got the right one. Um, what I did want to say, where is that? What is this? Oh, okay. Anyway, um, how he did a lot of his work was a lot of times, you know, he collaborated with Rodney Jerkins, aka Dark Child. So a lot of my favorite um, works of the Sean Daniels come from the collaborations with Dark Child, but he also has some other ones that are really great as well. But anyway, just going down the list. Um, Destiny Child Say My Name, of course, is probably one of the most popular ones everybody knows because you, if you were old enough to remember, 
September of 1999 till about January of 2000. It was say my name, say my name, say my name, say my name all night, all day on the radio, on the TV, on the commercials, everywhere. You heard it playing from somebody's car, playing from somebody's backyard. Somebody's somebody's riding their bike and they got the headphones on and it's playing say my name. That was just this huge blockbuster hit. It was a song that really transitioned Destiny's Child from, you know, one of the many R&B girl groups that were out at the time to pretty much some crossover big giant pop stars. Um, so Say My Name is always going to be one that definitely carries weight. Telephone, Lady Gaga. That was actually written for Britney Spears. Um, but, you know, it was a big hit. Ray J, One Wish. Um, what else did we have? Michael Jackson, You Rock My World. Um, which I would say was a very different song for 2001. 2001 was a very interesting year musically because it's that time period where we were finally coming out of this phase where everybody was trying to make all this intergalactic music. You remember like from like 1999 to a part of 2000 because it was Y2K, it was the new millennium, it was all of that. A lot of the music, some of the music got lost, the melodies got lost and everything was so centered on sound effects and and auto tune this and all this other stuff and computer sounds and everything. So. For a minute, a lot of the songs got, got, got stuck in this like 1999-2000 time capsule. So it's kind of like if you watch an episode of the Parkers, there's a lot of songs, like when you hear like Freestyle Unity and a lot of the songs they had, that reminds me of 99-2000 sometimes. So by the time you got to 2001, finally we got over the fact that okay, it's a new millennium, and okay, let's get back to really making sure the music still has, you know, melody and lyrics. And so you saw a shift musically. Um, even though 2001 was a really hard year to define musically because you just had so many extremities. You had a song like Michael Jackson, You Rock My World, versus A Destiny's Child, Bootylicious, versus Janet, All For You, versus, um, what, what else is 2001? I don't know, just so many different songs. It was just a very unique era. Or Aaliyah's, um, the Red Album, the self-titled album. So, you know, just lots of different sounds for 2001. Anyway, staying on topic here, Tony Braxton, He Wasn't Man Enough. You know, that was the, 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 the reemergence of Toni Braxton after the bankruptcy. And, and this was also like a, a, a reinvention of her sound. You know, she had, you know, a very great pocket that she worked in with the really great R&B gems like the How Many Ways and I Love Me Some Him and You Mean the World to Me and There's No Me Without You and Why Should I Care? And so to come out with a song like He Wasn't Man Enough, which was like a banger, like, oh, totally got some crank to her. Okay. And another thing about being a good songwriter, somebody like Deshaun Daniels, like you have, you have to know how to bring lyrics to life. Lyrics are lyrics, but how do you bring them to life? And you bring a, lyrics to life through a really great melody through finding what artist is gonna sing that, like whose voice can complement and fit the song, through the production, like what's the music gonna do. But in addition, the vocal arrangements and having everything set up. One of the things that I admire about a song like He Wasn't Man Enough for me, they were like, okay, how do we enhance the song even more? Let's bring in Tamar Braxton and let's bring in Shantae Moore. We're gonna put them on the background vocals to kind of complement Tony Braxton's voice and, and bring out the best of everything. And I think like that that's a gift you have to have. You have to recognize what your ear can understand um, as far and, and have a vision with. So, you know, that was always a great one. Tamar Braxton, the one. Sierra, can't leave him alone. Tamar Braxton, love and war. Brandy and Monica, the boy is mine. You know, one. That was a song, in my opinion, that was the perfect transition to help Monica and Brandy go from being teen pop acts or teen R&B acts to young women and, and having more to sing about and being able to appeal to every generation. They already appealed to adults because, one, they had very mature songs like Monica, songs like Before You Walk Out My Life and, and, and Why I Love You So Much. Even though she was 14, 15 singing them, you had grown folks who could relate. Same thing with Brandy and, and her catalog. And so a song like this was that perfect transition to understand that, okay, these young girls who had these really grown voices that were singing these very adult songs are now adults. And so they're really about to take you on a journey for the next few years. And somebody like Brandy, you know, pretty much the work that LaShawn Daniels and Ronnie Jerkins pretty much crafted her whole sound for like Never Say Never and, and Full Moon and, and even a lot of the songs on the Human album. Um, carrying on, uh, Whitney Houston is not right, but it's okay. Very different song for 1998-99 um, as far as the vibes are out there. Look, Whitney was giving us math equations, okay? I know for sure there was some little child that got saved from getting in trouble trying to do the math problems because they couldn't figure out 6 minus 4 and then somehow that Whitney song popped in their head and they said, wait a minute, if 6 of y'all went out, uh, the four of you were really cheap, yeah, because only two of you had to, two, four, six, six minus four is two, mama, I told you I got it, like, I found your credit card receipt, okay, that saved somebody's life, because you know, some parents are so punitive when it comes to the kids in the homework, Whitney Houston saved somebody's life with that song, um, Destiny's Child, Lose My Breath, 
Um, Michael Jackson, Invincible, Brandy, Angel in Disguise, Erica Campbell, I Love God, like that's the song that came out a few years ago, you know, she kind of brought trap <laughs> to gospel, uh, Brandy, Top of the World, Brandy, Right Here Departed, I'm skipping some of these Michael ones on accident, Michael Jackson, Invincible, Michael Jackson, Heartbreaker, Privacy, uh, Tamar Braxton, If I Don't Have You, lots of Tamar tracks as well, like he pretty much created the foundation of Tamar's sound to begin with, kind of, as far as the lyrics and the subject matter, um, Tamar, Broken Record, that's a, that's a really good one. I like that song a lot. Um, where we at? T uh, Tamia, Can't Get Enough. Tamar Braxton, again, Hot Sugar. Catfish, she did that. Sun, Brandy, nothing. Even the Spice Girls, Holler. That's when they kind of went a more R&B route. Brandy, What About Us. Um, Tamar, Simple Things. Whitney Houston, If I Told You That. That's kind of like my favorite song off the My Love Is Your Love album, just because I, I love the way she sang the bridge. When she got to that part with the right thing. The I'm like, okay, Whitney, sing. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I don't even need the duet version. I like the one where it's just her by herself. Um, Yolanda Adams, I believe. That was on the Honey soundtrack. It's at the very end of the movie when the kids are like dancing and little boy roll with little skates at the end of the movie. Um, Black, I'm Good. That was also on the Honey soundtrack. They pretty much just did most of the Honey soundtrack, if we're being honest. Brandy Tomorrow. Brandy put that on everything, which in my opinion gets the vote. It's one of the more underrated songs from the Never Say Never album. Um, Brandy Never Say Never the Song, Brandy Camouflage, Brandy Falls, Sharifa Need a Boss, Brandy You Don't Know Me Like You Used To, and of course that remix knock when it had the Brat and Shauna on it, um, where are we at, Brandy I Thought, which I always wanted to be a single, they never released it though, Tamar, Tiptoe, Brandy Learn the Heart, just know all, we, I'm going to bypass Brandy because there's so many Brandy songs, all the Brandy songs that came out between 98 and 2004 pretty much, um, Wow, Learn the Hard Way, Tamar Braxton, Where It Hurts, Tatiana Ali, all right? That's Ashley Banks. Remember the song Daydreaming? Um, Brandy, It's Not Worth It. Monica, All Eyes On Me. And I think one of the aspects about that song is when she made that song, this is when she was coming out of a, a really dark place in life. This is right around, like, remember her boyfriend killed himself right in front of her. So to be a songwriter and help to get an artist out of such a dark place and come up with such a bright song, that's a gift you already have to have because a lot of times people don't recover from things like that. People sometimes just go into dark spaces and can never get out. Um, you know, so that, that was a gift. Um, TLC Turntable, same story again. That song was written, that was in memory of Left Eye. You know, for Left Eye to die at the end of April of 2002 and then the label's like, y'all gotta still come out with an album or we're doing the greatest hits, what y'all wanna do? And they literally had four months to put this album together, you know, for them to you know, write a song about their group member who's no longer here, who they've been working with for 10 years. That's a gift to be able to pull that out of an artist. And again, sometimes every artist is not a songwriter. And so songwriters can relate to the experience of the artist just because of paying attention to their experiences and recognizing how they see the world and, and what's going on through their lens. And songwriters have a great way of doing that and bringing the best out of artists. Um, and that's a gift that he definitely had. Um, Kiara Sheard, You Don't Know, that's a fun one, that's that gospel song, I remember that's kind of like when she really started jumping a little bit, uh, you don't know, dun, dun. yeah, I remember that, um, Brandy All In Me, Brandy Like This, I always liked the transition of Like This into All In Me on the Full Moon album, that was always good, Monica Ain't Gonna Cry No More, Brandy The Definition, um, Janet Jackson Love and Feedback, you know, Janet Jackson fans will let you know really quick. They are loyal to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. If it ain't one of them two that did it, then we, we're not talking about no Janet Jackson songs. However, I will say the contributions that Rodney Jerkins and LaShawn Daniels had to Janet's Discipline album, those songs are heavily respected. So Feedback and Love and Curtains are, are, are like three songs that I guess Janet fans really actually do appreciate. Those are some of the better songs on the Discipline album. Um, even though I do like Rock With You, Neil did a good job on that one. Um... What else is on here? There's so, there's so many. We'd be here all day. I'm going to try to scroll a little faster. Tiffany Evans, I'm grown. Um, if you remember that one. Brandy, Can We. Sierra, Make It Last Forever off the Evolution album. That was a good one. Um, Mary J. Blige, Suitcase. That one actually just came out a few years ago. That was a nice one. Um, where we at? Where we at here? <laughs> Even when Tyra Banks... Remember Tyra Banks tried to come out with that song? I, and she she had it on the show, the little Shake Your Body. Shake Your Body. Da, 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 Hey, they even helped her with that one. Okay, they wanted her to have her dream too. <laughs> um, where are we at here? Tony Braxton, Do You Remember When? Off the More Than a Woman album, that was a good one. Key Sweat, I Put You On. Shantae Moore, If I Gave Love, which was the song that indirectly influenced Jennifer Lopez's If You Had My Love, which they also did. 
Um, the politics behind that is funny, but yeah, well, not really funny, but um, Tony Braxton Rewind off the Pulse album was a good one. Um, I Hate That You Love Me, Diddy Dirty Money. That, in my opinion, was one of the strongest songs off the last Train to Paris album. That's a really great one. Really like that song. Jennifer Lopez, I Got You. Um, the Rebirth album, that's the one that came out in 05. Um, I would definitely say the stronger tracks on that album are the tracks that LaShawn Daniels did with Rodney Jerkins and then also the songs Jennifer Lopez did with Rich Harrison. So I Got You is probably one of the stronger songs off that album as well as Get Right and Whatever You Want to Do. Um, Tamar, I'm Grown. Uh, or not, that's the wrong song. Too Grown, wrong person. <laughs> um, Mel B, Tell Me. So many, like this really a lot. A. Marie, Think of You. That was on the Honey soundtrack as well. Um, I think we already talked about Black, I'm Good. Um, but Black also had the song Fall Back and Blackout, which is some really good ones as well. I'm still scrolling. We're about to wrap because I don't want to talk too much on this. I think we already did the Ray J ones, The Girl You What I Need, um, and One Wish. Um, da, 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 da. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. There's so many of them. All right, well, I'm going to stop here just because I don't want to um, talk your ears off too long. But, you know, uh, again, he's contributed so much in such a short period of time and a lot of those songs especially those blockbusters like those Whitney, like to think about it this man worked with Whitney Michael Beyonce and Janet like they, they were just in his phone like what you doing tomorrow you know, let me call Whitney Houston and see what she up hey Whitney what, what's up like boy that's living in your passion you know and so again uh, it's so sad he's not here and, and, and like I said I, I feel so horrible for the family especially the three sons and everything um, but he was just such a you know if you've ever seen like some of the shows he and his wife are on, they're like just like the life of the party. You ever have those friends that are just like the life of the party friends? Like no matter when they show up, you know it's gonna be a good time. You know, like if you were growing up, your parents had those friends that would come over and you'd be excited when they came over because you knew it was just gonna be a good day at the house. Everybody gonna be laughing. You know, that's kind of the vibe I've always gotten from him. Anytime I saw him on TV and everything like that, um, you know, just really upstanding guy, really great guy. Um, and best wishes to his family. One thing I did want to share with everybody last minute. I've talked about this before at my end of the year video for 2018. But I have this little magical jar here that my best friend introduced me to. And so normally what this jar, you call it like a prayer jar or a wish jar. But pretty much anytime something good happens in your life, you write it down, you put it in a jar. And then on those days where you're feeling like crap, you go to this jar and you just kind of look at all the things you wrote. And it kind of just reminds you of how good life is. I think... In this aspect, if you could shift it just to show somebody how much you appreciate them, because I think sometimes we don't tell people how much we appreciate them until they're no longer here, you should take two or three people in your life that you can think of, whether it's a parent or a best friend or a loved one, even your girlfriend or your, your boyfriend, your husband, your, your child, whatever, and for like six months or even like a year, every time there's a good memory you have, I feel like you should write it down and put it in a jar, and then when it's their birthday or it's a holiday, you give them that jar. And you share everything like how they impacted your life. I think that's a great way to let people know how much you value and appreciate them. I think that's one of the best gifts you can give to somebody, especially if you're somebody who's really not into materialistic things or, or you really just like things that have sentimental memories. I think this is a really great idea. Like you literally just write down these great memories that you have with the person, give it to them on their birthday, like a jar full. So you got to fill it up, you know, make them feel really good. Like it's just one way to really make people feel great about themselves because I, I just think we got to get into the space of you know appreciating people while they're here and also getting into the space where we're just living and, and not just living but like living life to the fullest and living in your passion and, and just really contributing what it is you have to offer to the world you know he took the time to share his gift with everybody and it, in, and it impacted so many people and a lot of us sit on our gifts and we have so many talents and we don't even use them because we're afraid of what other people are going to say or we're so swamped into all of the, the distractions that life brings us. Find that space to, you know, go out and, and do what makes you happy and, and share with the world what it is that you contribute because all of us have some kind of gift. Sometimes it takes us a minute to find it. We all have a passion. It Sometimes it takes us a minute to figure out how to matriculate and, and make it you know coming to fruition but you know all of us should find that lane but you know with LaShawn Daniels just as somebody who's an artist you know I could not dare go a day without paying my respects to his contributions because literally the sound that he's been able to do as far as the collaborative efforts he's done with other producers and the songs that he's written for so many people that has influenced so many like he's influenced an entire generation of, of songwriters and composers and, and everything like that and, and even when you're just talking vo vocal arrangers because um, that's another aspect of production is really making sure your vocal arrangements are, are something serious. Um, and I'm sure Brandy fans can really appreciate that with, you know, what they were able to do with Brandy and, and just other artists as well. So, 
again, I, you know, rest in peace. And again, that legacy lives on. Some really great soundtracks. Um, hey, I think y'all should hit title Spotify. Go back and rediscover some of those songs. Go back and relive those moments. Relive where you were when some of those songs dropped. Anyway, I'm out. Subscribe. <laughs>